Hi, my junior paleontologist. My name is Dr. Anthony, and welcome to my Jurassic Lodge. I am the owner and lead park ranger of Stomp Chomp Roar. We are a dinosaur-themed entertainment service right here in Omaha, and we bring the dig site to you. Now, what does that mean? We bring the fossil digging tubs, the dinosaur games, the prehistoric crafts, even our two-foot super volcano raptor rock. And there's one more thing. We actually bring a real baby dinosaur to your birthday party or special event. Now, I got him right here in the Jurassic Jeep, and I want to get him out and see if you guys know what kind of dinosaur he is. This is Paleo, and he's our baby Spinosaurus. Now, he's kind of like the T-Rex, but he has this sail on his back, and he has a more narrow snout compared to the T-Rex. Now, he would have lived during the Cretaceous period a hundred million years ago in what is today Northern Africa, but it wouldn't have been the desert like we see it is today. It would have been more swamps and grasslands, and he would have ate fish, and that's why we feed him these little fish when we go to our parties, because the scientists, the paleontologists, have actually found fossilized fish skeletons in the bellies of the Spinosaurus when they've dug them up. Now, he is a dinosaur, like I said, but he's got these weird spikes on his tail. The Spinosaurus didn't have those spikes, and what happened was, when he was in our dinosaur lab, he accidentally got a little bit of Stegosaurus DNA mixed into him, and those gave him the spikes, what are called thagomizers, on the end of his tail. Now, he's a dinosaur, like I said, but what is a dinosaur? What are the characteristics that actually make up a real dinosaur? You know, a reptile, are they cold or hot-blooded? There's so many things people think about dinosaurs, but what are the actual three characteristics? And that's what I want to explain to you guys. Now first, just like our Spinosaurus back there, he lived during the Cretaceous period, where the Cretaceous period was part of the Mesozoic era. And that is number one, a dinosaur had to live during the Mesozoic era. And that was 180 million, it spanned 180 million years, from 245 to 65 million years ago. And it can be broken up into three parts, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous period. Now, all the dinosaur species here, they didn't all live the full 180 million years. Like our Stegosaurus here, he lived during the Jurassic period compared to our T-Rex who was in the late Cretaceous period. A lot of times we see them fighting in TV shows and movies. They never would have seen each other because of the time difference in between them. Now second, a dinosaur had to live its time on land. All our dinosaurs here, they lived on land. They walked on the land. But our Mosasaurus, we see him in a lot of TV shows, movies, he was not a real dinosaur. He's just a prehistoric sea creature that lived in the ocean. So if you lived your time in the ocean, you're not a dinosaur. Same thing with our Pteranodon. He's right here, or a lot of people call him the Pterodactyl, because that's what Hollywood made. He's actually a Pteranodon, and he lived his time in the sky flying around. So he didn't live on the ground, so he's not a real dinosaur. But I love him, and I'm sure a lot of you still love the Pteranodon anyway. Now, the third thing to become a dinosaur, you had to have an upright stance. Your legs went directly below your bodies. As you can see here, all their legs went directly below their bodies, and they didn't rub their bellies on the ground. When you see like a lizard, an alligator, or a turtle today, their legs are sprawled out to the side and then down, and they rub their bellies on the ground. That is not a dinosaur. Those are not characteristics of a dinosaur. So those are the three things that make you a dinosaur. And like I said, they're during the Mesozoic era. Well, the Mesozoic era ended 65 million years ago. How? Why, where did the dinosaurs go? Why did the dinosaurs go extinct? And what happened was an asteroid hit the planet at 50,000 miles per hour and left a six mile wide crater down off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. When this happened, the dirt, sediment, and the rocks would have went up into the atmosphere and they would have came down as giant fireballs. This would have caught the vegetation around the planet on fire, turning the planet into a giant firestorm. This could have also caused tsunamis, giant waves would have went around the planet, also causing earthquakes and maybe even some volcanic activity. So we've got our Raptor Rock Volcano here, and I want to add our four ingredients into it and see if we can get it to explode. So the four ingredients we have are water, baking soda, soap, and vinegar. So first off, we're going to add our water and our baking soda mixture together, 
and get them to start to dissolve together. So there's our water. Then we're going to add three scoops of baking soda. One, two, and three. Now we're going to mix that in and let that baking soda really start to dissolve into our water. And next is we're going to add our dish soap. And the dish soap gives it a little bit more sudsy consistency when the volcano explodes. And we dyed our dish soap red. Now, do you, what color do you think the lava is going to come out when it explodes? It's kind of think about when you have green or blue dish soap in your kitchen and you wash your hands. When you start washing your hands, the soap, does it stay that green or blue color? It's going to be the same thing with our red dish soap here. So I'm going to mix that in. It's going to turn our water or reddish pink color. Then we're going to go ahead and add that into our volcano. Get our pteranodon off there. There's that mixture. Now we're going to add our vinegar in there. And it's going to react with the baking soda that we've already got mixed into the volcano and see if we can get it to get a good explosion. So here's our vinegar. I'll count down from three and see if we can get this to explode. Three, two, one. Boom. It turns white. Just like when you mix your hands with the soap in the kitchen, when it starts to suds, the soap turns white. See if we can get it to go one more time. Now, when the lava goes down the base of the volcano, it's going to cover up our all the little dinosaurs down here. Now, in order for you to become a fossil in real life, your body, the dinosaur's body, would have had to die close to water. And what would have happened was they would have sunk down into the mud, and that mud would have actually protected their bodies, and they would have fossilized over time. If you were a dinosaur and you died out in a field somewhere, the sun and the weather, the rain would have deteriorated your bodies. You would have had scavengers like velociraptors come by. Maybe they would have carried a limb away. And you're, you would have had a lot less chance to fossilize. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video, learning a little bit more about what a dinosaur is, seeing our uh, volcano explode, meeting Paleo or Spinosaurus back there. And I want to wish everybody a happy and safe summer, and I hope that we can all get back to normal after this quarantine goes away. And I just want to say thank you again, and have a great summer. Thanks, guys.